Hello everyone, my name is Sandirena and today I will be briefly going over the health care of transgender inmates. I will be briefly touching over the Eighth Amendment, gender dysphoria, and hormone therapy. To start, along with to point out that health care is very important to all inmates and prison facilities. Uh, transgender prisoners in the United States are guaranteed by our constitution to receive these needs. It is required by the Eighth Amendment that prisoners receive proper health needs for those who are in serious mental health needs. During the past years, the courts have came to the conclusion that gender dysphoria, which is also known as gender identity disorder, is something that may require uh, treatment. Our constitution, however, does not give the inmate choice of treatment for gender dysphoria. Uh, these choices must solely be based on medical needs rather than just any personal preferences. Uh, hormone therapy is also that is something that is considered to be medically necessary. This cannot be treated by just therapy itself or antidepressants. Any inmate who has undergone this therapy cannot just be taken off of this therapy just because there must be a very important reason, um, medically reason, that requires the stop of this treatment. Um, I also want to point out that any failure to permit access for health care may result with a violation of constitutional rights to any transgender inmates. Sexual assault and abuse. Transgender inmates endure sexual assault at extremely high rates, specifically transgender women housed in men's prisons. According to the department's National Prison Rape Elimination Commission, prisoners who are non-conforming to the gender of the facility they are housed in faced a heightened risk of sexual violence and other forms of abuse. A 2007 study of sexual assault in California correctional facilities revealed that 59% of transgender inmates reported experiencing sexual assault compared to 4.4% of all inmates. Out of 322 randomly selected inmates in California state prisons, over 4% reported to being sexually assaulted. Sexual assault is 13 times more likely to occur to transgender inmates. Some concerns that the public has about transgender inmates is that they could possibly be faking to be transgender in order to be placed in a facility with the opposite sex. States also lack the training and resources to be able to determine if an inmate faces danger if placed in a facility that is non-gender conforming. California is one of the few states to house inmates according to their gender identity. Most prisons across the United States house inmates according to the gender assigned at birth. When transgender inmates face sexual assault, they are often placed in solitary confinement. This is an extremely unfair so-called solution. Transgender inmates are practically being punished for being sexually abused by being placed in these solitary confinement rooms. Hello everyone, my name is Elliot Kim, and I just want to describe how some men or women feel about how people of the other sex biologically may start joining their facilities. One last year, in September of 2020, Senate Bill 132, or SB 132 for short, was passed by the governor of California, aka Gavin, AKA Gavin Newsom. And this is a very bad bill to pass, as there's already been tens of biological men processed into the Central California Women's Facility, with incidents already occurring. In one instance, reported by the law officer, seven women have already corroborated to the fact that there is at least one woman in the Central California Women's Facility that is pregnant, and that's very bad for both the woman and the soon-to-be-born baby as they live in a prison. And to top off on that, this isn't the worst situation that's occurred with the transgender inmate. The worst seems to be transgender woman, transgender woman inmate, Carmen Guerrero, being murdered by her cellmate in less than nine hours. And to top off on that, another inmate testified to the fact that Miguel Crespo, the murderer, told officers that he would kill her if he wasn't relocated or if she wasn't relocated. So the only person who listened was Carmen who was already filing for to be relocated. So it really is a shame that that could have been prevented if somebody would have just listened. So knowing all this, it becomes painfully obvious that women in general are, they're fearful of this and transgender women are also fearful of how everything is working. The only people who seem to be enjoying some part of it are the all men's facilities because it seems to be that sexual assaults against this group of people are at a very high rate. And one, one transgender woman, biologically male,
told her experience that she can't go to the gym with other transgenders but she has to go with all men which I can imagine is very uncomfortable so knowing this it all comes down to one question where should they be located uh, and right now there isn't a really good answer for that but so it's all about testing the waters and hopefully one day we find the answer that everyone agrees to Hello, my name is Ruth and I'm going to be presenting on the following few slides. So to begin, marginalized in society. Transgender inmates are continuously viewed as the gender they were born as rather than the gender they identify with. An example of this is if we have a transgender woman in a men's prison, most correctional staff and inmates will refer to this individual as a he rather than a she. Correctional staff refer to transgender inmates as a gender as the gender they were born as, which leads to institutional failure, as I just mentioned. Uh, society also fails transgender individuals, therefore they become incarcerated. And from my research on this project, as well as on the working table, I found that most studies on transgender inmates are based in California prisons, meaning there is a lack of research on transgender inmates. Okay, so on to my next slide, a failing society. Transgender individuals receive the bare minimum of education. A doctoral student from UC Irvine found that out of 315 transgender inmates, 32% received a high school diploma or GED as their highest form of education. Um, participating in sex work is prone in the transgender community. And this happens because, again, they, they lack the training, the qualities, the skills needed to be able to obtain a job. So then they result to sex work. Homelessness rates are high amongst transgender individuals, and transgender individuals are victimized at high rates as well. Uh, this includes physical and sexual violence. This does not only pertain to society, but also to uh, institutions such as being incarcerated in a prison. And then the transgender community is more likely to be involved with law enforcement than any other criminal. So for example, if we have two males, who commit the same crime, one of them being a transgender male, the transgender male will likely suffer consequences and become incarcerated rather than the other male. And why are these societal factors important? They are all important because it's essentially a domino effect. If one happens in a transgender individual's life, then they're likely more likely to be incarcerated. Okay, and what can we do? We can handle... We can handle cases of transgender individuals on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we can correctly place transgender individuals in correctional facilities. We can properly train correctional staff in the handling of transgender individuals. And we can also um, partake in the decarceration of transgender individuals. This means that we don't necessarily need to incarcerate transgender individuals for minor crimes. And lastly, uh, something that we can consider is opening separate facilities for transgender inmates. Um, this means that they will have their own space, they will be with the transgender community, and it was found from research that the transgender community associates more within themselves rather than with other prisoners in the first place. So opening um, a facility for just transgender individuals and the LGBT community could be really beneficial towards them. And most importantly, we can be better as a society. Uh, we won't be able to make any change if we don't fix the societal factors that are failing uh, the transgender community in the first place.